There are nine races up on the High Felt at Turfentain on Saturday, the 5th of November. Standside track is where the race meeting will be run, and it is the 250,000 Rand Victory Moon Stakes, a Group 3 event, the 150,000 Rand Gardenia Stakes, it's a listed event, and plenty of other racing action around those two features. There are nine races carded, and the very first race is fairly early, 11.55. It's a maiden plate over 1,160 metres. And at the early time of recording, a very early Friday morning, there are two scratches, scratchings in the first race, nine Joyous Jubilee and 13 Seven Wonders. And if the betting market's anything to go by, Rahil, number seven, Faustinovo for the Justin for the Johann Janssen von Fieren stable, um, looks to be the one they all have to beat. I'm just prepared to put down the fact that uh, his second run over the 1450 was a touch too far too quickly, uh, back to the 1160 to a sprinting distance um, where he ran second a length behind rule by force. I think he's the one that sets the standard for the first race. Yeah, he does look to be the horse that they all have to beat, Warren, and I think that uh, he's a horse that if there isn't any support for the first-timers and be with this one, Faustinova. Last time out, he just took on extremely strong company. You just can see by the average rate in 92, beaten behind Unzen, he was drawn badly as well. But um, this time, Turfante, it's that side track, 10 draw. I think uh, Gavin Larina back aboard this individual and he should take a power of beating number four. Six Fish Eagle at around 10 to 1 in the market. He's one that I'll keep an eye on and include into Trifectas and Quartets. The Damn Fish River was a winner over the 1,000 meter trip along with wins over 1,400. So I think that horse uh, could just run a nice race on debut. But uh, Faustinova, the one that they all have to beat in race number one. Now uh, we'll move along to uh, race number two, which is the start of the Bipot race two, 1160 meters the distance. And uh, this is a maiden plate for the fillies and mares. 12.25 is the time you need to get those bets on for race number two. And uh, your favorite in this lineup here is number 14, C. Anamon. And uh, this is a first-timer, well-bred individual, three-year-old daughter of Dynasty, Mike DeCock, Randall Simons team up. And we've seen a couple of the first-timers from the Mike DeCock yard run decent races on debut. This individual, 9 to 10 in the market, Warren. Very, very short. Very short in the betting. Dynasty Philly out of El Boran C, as you've alluded to. How's that for a pedigree? My, oh my. Already been snapped up, as you said, in the betting. Opened up 11 to 10, short 9 to 10. And if she's got uh, half the amount of ability that her mother had and her father, well, she'll win and she'll win hard held. But it's never as easy as that. Um, I respect number four, Mighty Goddess, from the bang-in-form stable of uh, Billy Natus. Ryan Munger rides, my oh my, he's just riding the crest of a wave at the moment, is Ryan Munger, neatly drawn uh, up the straight at uh, Turfentain. So for me, Mighty Goddess is uh, one to take very seriously, and I'm expecting tons of improvement from number 11, Let's Cruise. So four Mighty Goddess, 11, Let's Cruise, and obviously the first time a 14, C Anemone. Uh, look to be the ones for race two. Anything to add before we move on to race three? I think just with no, horse number 12 or in uh, Nordic view, you mentioned uh, Alec Laird's other runner, number 11. I'd like to mention this one, Nordic view. On debut, I thought this one would run a nice race, 25 to one in the market. Possibly needed uh, the run, and uh, no doubt will come on tons with that experience under the belt. Does meet a more competitive field, but I think that uh, this horse at 25 to 1 in the market could be one that uh, could be worth a place bet at the second time of asking. I think that she'll give a good account of herself, but uh, the way the betting has it, number 14, Sian Among, the one that they all have to beat, well bred individual, and it would be no surprise to see this one romp home to victory in race number two on the program. Now we'll move along to race number three, a graduation plate over 1400 meters. And number one, Quantum Theory. This is going to be a banker in all bets for me. Two from two over course and distance. He's beaten behind the likes of Prophet last time out. Beaten behind Cousin Casey in that penultimate start, which was a group one. And I think that uh, Quantum Theory should take a power of beating in this lineup. I, I just find him hard to oppose. Seven to ten in the market. I'm not surprised about his price. 1,400 meters, he's got no dis uh, no issues, as I alluded to, with the course and distance form. And just based on what he's taking on, I don't think that um, these horses are quite up to his level. 
And I know that Swing Upon a Star was campaigned in a group two where he got the job done beating Sunblush. And there's only two points separating them. But I just feel that Quantum Theory could just be the better horse. And I expect him to uh, be in the winner's enclosure after race number three has been run, Warren. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. We're not going to argue much. Course and distance statistics are all good with Quantum Theory. Everything's good with Quantum Theory. Hard to beat the Karari Cult. Swing Upon a Star, I Am Giant, obviously got chances. And I'm expecting a better effort from number six, Antigua Knight. Okay, race four is a open handicap, a merit rate of 93 open handicap for three-year-olds over 1,800 meters. Ryan Munger rides a lot for Ashley Fortune. He also rides a lot for Tyron Zaki. So I wonder whether he you know, had uh, to ponder on if he's going to ride Meridus or if he's going to ride Lebetio. He's riding Lebetio for Tyron Zaki, whose stable's firing on all cylinders. Um, I see around 13 to 10 Meridus on that run to Feather Boa. Well, he's going to be very hard to beat. But Are you reading any, anything into the jockey bookings? I am a little. I am a little reading into the jockey bookings because, you know, you can't ride two horses in the same race. But uh, being the consummate professional that Ryan Munger is, uh, you know, he would have spoken to the Fortunes. He would have spoken to Tyron Zaki. And, and maybe they've all had a discussion and, and he's had to choose one and he's gone with uh, Lebetio. Maybe he felt that the way Lebetio won by nearly 10 lengths, eight, nine lengths um, in the Maidens, uh, that, he's a, that he's a top quality individual. So, yeah, I am reading a little into the jockey uh, arrangement. But uh, I do think that Meredith is still the one to beat purely on, on the Feather Boa form line. But for those that have got limited budgets, Rahil, which is like the most of us, uh, you could bank it to Meredith. But in your covering perm, I would throw in the five Lebetio. Two and five for me. I think uh, number two, Meredith. I, th I just feel that the owners probably wanted Gavin Larina board this time out. He's drawn the gate number two. Last time out, the money poured onto this individual. He started off eight to ten in the market and he was expected to get the job done. He looked to be one of the better bets on the card. And he was second behind Fast Love. Possibly the conditions on, uh, towards the latter part of the race meeting suited Fast Love. But I think Meredith is a horse that they all have to beat. There's just one more horse that I'll include into the pick six, and that's number three, Atticus Finch from the Alec Laird Yard. He's a horse that I think is just going to improve with racing under the belt. He's had two starts to date, and he shed his maiden tag last time out over 1,600 when he beat Central City. I think that the 1,800 meters trip is going to be right up his alley. He receives uh, two kgs from Meredith, three and a half kgs from horse number one, Simple Simple. And I think that Atticus Finch could give... Uh, the owners and uh, Alec Laird a good run for their money. So numbers two and three for me and for Warren, numbers two and five in race number four. Now next up will be race number five, a pinnacle stakes over 1160 meters. And we see Desert Miracle in action. And uh, Desert Miracle, she has been priced up as your favorite in this lineup, nine to 10. We do have two scratchings. That's numbers six and seven. So we are reduced to a field of five runners now to compete in this pinnacle stakes. The Mike de Kock uh, charges of uh, six and seven have been scratched from the lineup. And he just has Desert Miracle, who has had two starts for two seconds over this course and distance. Samanga Kamalo aboard. And last time out, she was beaten by Unstable Companion. Lesser fancied, it must be said. And uh, yeah, well, well done to uh, the owners of Humdinger, the International Racing uh, Club, but I'm not convinced that Humdinger is in the class of Desert Miracle, and I was a bit surprised with that victory, I must be honest, especially at level weights, but uh, I think if Desert Miracle and Humdinger were to meet once again, Desert Miracle would uh, beat Humdinger quite comfortably. In this lineup here, however, I think that uh, she's beatable, and I'm going to be with number three, Sweet Pepper, highest rated three-old in the country on a 1-1-5. She's a horse that was disappointing last time out, but valid excuses, lame, right hind and right four. I think that Sean Terry will have enough fine, in a good space heading into the race. And I think that uh, Sweet Pepper is the one that they all have to beat. She does receive weight from Desert Miracle and Valdosia. And I think that she's a quality sort. Four, four runs for three victories. I think that uh, she's the one to beat. Number five, Moon Shining Through. She, she also looks to be a nice prospect. That penultimate start, put a line right through it. She stumbled down at the start and lost the race from there. She bounced back to winning ways last time out. And I think uh, she'll give a good account of herself. She receives weight from the entire field, which is a bonus for her. She's obviously not a horse that is rated right up there. But she is a three-time winner like uh, 
Post number three, Sweet Pepper, and I think that shall run well. So three and five for me, Warren. What's your take on the lineup? Um, uh, you could make a case for each and every one of them, really. Even Kayla's champ, who's the uh, who's um, a horse that's got solid form, to gobsmack Mercury Rising. So cases can be made for for most of these runners. But my numbers: three, Sweet Pepper, like you; two, Desert Miracle; one, Valdorcha. I'm expecting a lot more from Valdorcha. I'm expecting him to build on that last run, which he more than likely needed. But Desert Miracle. Yep, obviously the uh, 1160 is not uh, her game, not her trip, so it's a uh, preparation for better things to come. But uh, if she were to win, I wouldn't be shocked at all. But Sweet Pepper, Ode to the Oceans, come out and run second recently. Miss Daisy just keeps winning, so the form line is there. I'm expecting, like you, Sweet Pepper to win. 3 two, one my numbers as we move on to race six, which is the Gardenia Stakes. It's a listed event where the best weighted is Big Burn. The average rating is 96. It's over 1,000 metres, and it's at quarter to three, a humdinger of a race. I am not going to talk much about this. You very... help me. You have to help me. Gonna... It's tough. It's tough, Rahil. I'm going to try and help you, and you're going to try and help me, and in turn, we're both going to try and help the public. It's a tough, tough race. It's a, fairly... it's a big field. Um, at the bottom of the page, numbers 13, Aga Heat, and 14, Showtime. Uh, and 12 flower bomb they look very good and I, i'm looking forward to seeing them run and i'm hoping they're going to run well number seven miss cool um, uh, it makes her come back and and she's a good filly she won the nursery some time ago but for me the interesting horse in the race is number nine a pico i'm glad you mentioned her because i was going to ask you about her a revelation since racing with blinkers uh, she's had four wins and a, a third with blinkers muzi yeni uh, is one from one with her she's a rated 90 um, her last two wins have really been ultra impressive and uh, for me she's interesting and at around 33 to 10 I'm going to make her my first choice 9, 7, uh, 10, sorry 9, 7, uh, 12, 13, 14 but it's nowhere near as easy as that we haven't even mentioned Big Burn. Yeah, it's a very, very competitive race, Warren, and a uh, race I'm not going to take any chances here. I pick six jackpots, I'm going to play the field and hope for the best possible result, the worst result in the lineup. Horse uh, number 12, Lao Bomb, last time I thought she looked to be a big run in that lineup behind Kiss Me Captain. She got the job done. She's been given a four point penalty. She's 52 and a half kgs. That's her weight in this lineup. And I think that uh, she could run well once again. She's a horse that I think is only starting to get the hang of racing now. She's improving nicely. Two wins, three seconds from five starts. And I think Corny Spee seems to have a nice horse on his hands here. Number two, Kissing Point. Now, she only receives one and a half kgs from Big Burn. Whether that's going to be enough for her to get the better of Big Burn, I'm, I'm not sure. But in saying that, I just feel that over this distance, she could be effective. She's had five starts for two wins, one third and one fourth. And at around 10 to 1 in the market, I think that she could just represent some value. Rest plus two stats, three, three runs for one win and one fourth. Cabela Matsunyane writes for the in informed Brett Crawford yard. We all know that uh, James Crawford heads the yard over in the high felt. So I think that uh, this filly could just be competitive in this lineup. Thought it was a nice run last time out behind Batold Batoldi in a pinnacle stakes. And uh, she does take a drop in class compared to what she has meeting in the last two starts. So I think a uh, kissing point will be competitive uh, along with number 12, Flower Bomb. Healthy respect for Big Burn and Warren likes number 9, Ipico. If you were... Put into a corner for place accumulator numbers. Three numbers, Warren. Um, three numbers for the place accumulator. Uh, I would go seven, Miss Cool, nine, Epico, and thirteen, Aga Heat. Not with too much confidence. That's how difficult it is. But those are my three numbers: uh, seven, nine, and thirteen. So let's move along uh, to the next race, which is just as competitive. Uh, races 7, 8 and 9 still to come. It's the Victory Moon Stakes, a Group 3 event over 1,800 metres. And uh, my value selection here, Rahil, is number 4, second base. And second base is a horse that uh, is taking time to win his next race, but he was the fastest finishing last time. He's run to Comedy Ding, Reunion, Zilzal, Porta Manzana, uh, Sparkling Water and Aragosta are drawn deep. Uh, they've got obvious chances. William Robertson, I'm a bit concerned about the distance. East Coast, it looks to be a talented a young cult. Platinum Sky, perfect witness. We can go on and on and on, but uh, time is not, uh, uh, not with us. Um, but my value, each base selection is number four, second base. 
I think second best so will be a serious contender in this lineup. Perfect witness, horse number 17. I think that uh, she could give a good account of herself, especially in this race. She just has to carry 50 kgs on the back, and uh, Muzieni gets back aboard. This individual is the best weighted horse in the lineup. She's got a nice draw off gate number four, and I think at eight to one, she'll be competitive. So second base for Warren, and I'll be with uh, number 17, Perfect Witness. I think that she'll run well for the informed Candace Dawson Yard. So that's uh, numbers four and 17 in race number seven in what looks to be an ultra competitive race. And uh, looking forward to seeing Sparkling Water back in action. And uh, she was the Hollywood Bets Durban July winner of uh, 2022. Now we'll move along to race number eight on the program. It's an MR73 handicap, 2,400 meters the distance. Number one, Alphatic, he's drawn in gate number one. He was beaten behind Whispers of War in his last start, which was just four days ago. Quick backup for this individual. He's a favorite at 18 to 10 in the market. Is he, is he your top choice here? Rahil, when I first looked at the card, no, he wasn't. Then they've scratched number four, Cape Bouquet. Uh, blinkers, I think, have gone on Alphartic. There's already been a claim on Alphartic, gate one. So, uh, yeah, he probably is going to be my first choice. But it's a, ho a horrible race as far as I'm concerned. I would you suggested the field earlier. I'm suggesting the field here. There's only uh, seven runners, so it's affordable. I am expecting improvement from number six, Global Breeze, on that last run. One and six for me. I'm going to try and go the field in one of my other perms. does look to be one of those races where you could get uh, just about any result. And uh, Go Dream Machine could just be a big runner here, despite taking on the boys at 9-2 to two in the market. And I think that uh, she could run well. But Alphatic is probably the one that they all have to beat and is at 18-10 to 10 in the market. Let's move along to race number 9, the final race on the program. 1,400 metres the distance. Half past 4 is when uh, race number 9 will get go off and Black Egret is your 5-2 to two favorite and uh, he was beaten behind Kai and the, Con the Conqueror last time out seven days ago. Second in the race was the uh, first time that found a flood of support in the form of Munchkin. 1400 meters triple certainly suit this individual I feel. Ryan Munger aboard he's drawn in gate number seven and uh, he should give a good account of himself. Number six, Puerto Plata. Now, they put the money down like they knew the result on debut. Comfortably beaten. He's a horse that possibly needs further. They're stepping him up to 1,400 now. And what, what do you make of his chances here, Warren? Uh, I followed the money on debut. I was disappointed with his debut performance, to be very honest. Um, and I'm sure the connections were too. He was beaten nearly 10 lengths or just over 9 lengths, Puerto Plata. But uh, I am certainly giving him the benefit of the doubt. I'm expecting huge improvement. And if he were to improve to go close to winning, I wouldn't be shocked. You touched on Blue Egret, big runner, but not a good thing. Um, my first choice is number three, Billy Spellbound. I like the improvement I saw last time out. And uh, you touched on the first time in number 12, Shadapova, the Karari filly out of Nother Russia. I had the privilege some time ago of meeting Nother Russia at the farm and meeting young Sharapova at the farm. So I'm excited to see how she goes. Will this be another Russia's first season? Uh, second, I think second. it is. Uh, second, uh, but I, I stand to be corrected. But gate one, uh, Mike de Cox, Manga Kamalo. Uh, if Sharapova were to make a winning debut, I wouldn't be shocked. But my first choice is three, Bell, uh, Billy Spellbound. Expecting huge improvement from six, Parto Plato. And number 12, Sharapova. If uh, she's uh, anywhere near as good as her mom, uh, and her dad, then she'll go close. I have to agree with you on that, Warren Sharapova. Possibly the one that you have to keep uh, an eye on. But uh, Black Egret would be the top choice for me in race number nine. And uh, that's it for the preview show for racing at Turfentine on Saturday. Hopefully Warren and myself have guide you, guided you in the right direction. Have a good day's punting and all the best.